Well, I'd love to be able to stand up here and give you all that lovely excitement of, of the, uh, the last speaker. That was so inspiring. We just need to get out in those streets straight away. Yeah? Um, well, as mentioned, uh, the Quaker support for anti slavery has been long standing. And uh, just like to provide a little bit of background to that. And uh, if Quakers in the audience would indulge me, um, there is a Quaker fundamental belief that each human being is of unique worth. And uh, we are guided by our um, testimonies and our book of advices and queries, as we call it. Um, our testimonies are, just quickly run through them, is simplicity, peace, integrity, community, equality, and stewardship. Um, simplicity to, to allow others to live simply, simply live, I should say. Peace, non-violent ways of dealing with conflict is, is essential. Integrity, to act honestly in all dealings. And speak truth to power. Community, responding to the, to the needs of others. Equality, um, which I'll go back to. And stewardship, looking after the environment. Um, advices and queries, the other, the other book that we look to, gives us a guide on what Quakers consider to be practical consequences of their beliefs and putting that into practice in their lives. And we are asked to let our lives speak. Um, the guidance provided by our testimonies and uh, advices and queries so let many Quakers to become active in issues such as prison reform, peaceful solutions to conflict, uh, opposition to nuclear deterrent being one example, conscious, conscientious objection is another. Um, and Quakers were instrumental in the creation of Amnesty International, Oxfam, and of course Anti-Slavery International. Um, the testimony of equality, a belief in an equal humanity, led early Quakers to become involved in the abol abolition of slavery movement. And I think we can go back a bit late, earlier than what you mentioned before. Um, Quakers were the first organization in the world to take a collective stand against slavery, and that was in 1688 in the UK. Um, so throughout the years, I think Quakers have been constant in their support, both moral and financial, to organizations that seek to confront slavery in all its forms. Um, and I hope you won't be surprised to learn that Quakers have adopted ethical policies in relation to its investments, and that insists that none of its funds are invested in, in organizations which are not able to provide sufficient comfort regarding the transparency of their supply chains and where they cannot demonstrate that human trafficking does not form part of their trading model. Um, as I alluded, alluded to earlier, Quakers, including Thomas Clarkson and Thomas Buxton, founded Anti-Slavery International. It was, it, I understand it began after slavery had been abolished in the British Empire, and their vision and I quote, was for an organization that would prompt people not to cast off moral responsibility for new and, evo and evolving forms of human slavery. Quite far-sighted, really, in retrospect. So we as Quakers have a long association with Anti-Slavery International, and whilst its, its endeavors and campaigning has changed to meet the changing nature of slavery over the years, Quaker support continues as Anti-Slavery International pursues its games, goals and aims which are congruent with our values. We wish all the best for the future.